Would you stand this morning? I know it's cold and rainy outside. Come on, let's worship our God. He is here. Come on, let's sing. Be a weapon that silences the enemy. Let praise be a weapon that conquers all anxiety. Well, let it rise. Let praise arise. And we sing your name in the dark, and it changes everything. And we sing with all we are, and we claim your victory. Let it arise, let praise arise, come on. We'll see you break down every wall, till we'll watch the giants fall. We cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side, forever lift him high, with all creation cry. God, we praise you. Oh, 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 we praise you. Oh, 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 oh. Well, let faith be the song that overcomes for agency. And let faith be the song that calms the storm inside me. Well, let it arise. Break down every wall We'll watch the giants fall Fear cannot survive when we praise you The God of breakthroughs on our side Forever lift him high With all creation cry God we praise you This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you. We praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you. We praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you. We praise you. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you. We praise. We'll see you break down every wall. We'll watch the giants fall. Fear cannot survive when we praise you. The God of breakthroughs on our side. Forever lift him high. With all Break down every wall To watch the giants fall Fear cannot survive when we praise you The God of breakthroughs on our side Forever lift him high With all creation cry God we praise you Whoa.
everybody feeling this morning? Man, you guys excited for worship? Yeah, all right. Some of you need an extra cup of coffee this morning. Well, hey, turn to the person next to you, tell them they look good, and go ahead and grab a seat. Well, guys, I am excited to see you guys this morning. We're continuing on in this series we've been in called How We Change. And kind of the whole idea behind this series is I think a lot of us feel this innate desire to grow and to change as a person. But the reality is, if we follow Jesus, we don't want to just become like a better person. We want to become a new person. We want to look more like Jesus. And the question is, how does that happen? And I wish I could say that just more information helped you look more like Jesus. Because if that was the case, I would have nailed this a long time ago. I love reading. I love listening to podcasts. But man, there's so many more areas in my life that I need to grow and change. And I wish that I could even say just surrounding yourself with godly people was enough to make you more like Jesus. Because I work with some incredibly godly people. I am married to an incredibly godly person. And I wish that was enough but it's not. So we, a lot of us need to take this extra step of putting into practice certain behaviors, habits. We've been calling them practices that help us become more like Jesus because the things we do, do something to us. And we've kind of been grouping these into some different categories. We kind of kicked the series off by talking about these reflective practices like silence, solitude, Sabbath. They all start with an S. You just group them all there together. And those are actually not about doing things, but actually like taking things off of our plate. And can we sit with Jesus and just reflect on the ways that we need to become more like him? And then over the last few weeks, we've been talking about these active practices like fasting, praying, reading our Bible. That is where we start to add some things into our life to help us look more like Jesus. And today we're kind of kicking off this last category. And some of you are wondering how much longer is this series going to be? just a few more weeks, but this last category, these are communal practices. They're things that really you can only do with other people who are following Jesus. And this first week is all about worship. You know, a lot of times we talk about worship and we think of it from a very individualistic standpoint, right? Like I'm going to have my worship time in the car, in the shower, and I'm going to spend my time with Jesus. And that is all great. But when the Bible talks about worship, it actually talks about worship as a, a team sport, is something that, that you do with other people. In fact, how many of you have ever attended a worship service online before? Anybody? A bunch of y'all are liars. I know that you guys have attended online before. And, and the, the funny thing is, I remember when the pandemic first started and everything kind of shut down. It's like, all right, Sunday mornings, we're going to get the family in the room. We're all going to watch on TV. And before you know it, you know, kids are fighting and the animals are running in and out. And you're like, this is nothing like when we gather together with other believers. There's something different about being in the room for worship than just worshiping by ourselves. Maybe another illustration is that worship is a team sport. My two youngest boys, they've gotten into basketball. And and the crazy thing about basketball, there is an individual component to it, right? They have to go out and they practice their dribbling and their shooting. But you practice individually so that when you come together, that the team can succeed. And in the same way, throughout the week, we have these kind of personal times of worship to prepare us for when we come together with God's people. Like our preparation throughout the week means that we should be expecting God to move. That's our hope and our prayer is that as you come to church each and every week, that you're expecting to be in the presence of God. 
In fact, God gave us this pattern for worship. In the Old Testament, the temple was set up in a very specific way for worship. See, when the Jewish people would want to be in the presence of God, you would enter into these gates, into an outer court. And anybody could be in this outer court, men, women, Jewish people, Gentiles, anybody could go and worship there. But then there was an inner court and only the Jewish men could go there. And then at the very center was the Holy of Holies. That's where God's presence was. And in fact, only the high priest could go in there. And so if you put yourself in the mindset of a priest, how you would enter in to experience God's presence, you would enter in through the gates into the outer courts. I love what the Psalm says. It says, we enter his gates with thanksgiving in our heart and we enter his courts with praise. Like when we come to worship, it should be an attitude of thanksgiving and praise. That's why every week we start with songs that center on thanksgiving and praise. We even did it this morning already. It's not because we need a song to get hyped for the day. It's like we want an attitude of gratefulness and gratitude for all that God has done. But after you enter into the gates, there would be an altar where sacrifices were made. I think maybe for some of us, we don't have an animal sacrifice. We're, We're thankful that Jesus was the sacrifice to end all sacrifices, but we're called to be the living sacrifice. There may be some things in our life that we need to surrender. See, after the the priest would make the sacrifice, he would go to the next station. They called it the laver. It's like a bowl full of water on a pedestal. And the priest would go up and he would look at his own reflection and he would see his, his body covered with the blood and guts of this animal. And after seeing his reflection, he would wash the blood away. And maybe for some of us, our worship needs to include a period of reflection and asking God to cleanse us and make us new. And then the priest would go in the inner courts and there were two tables. One table was full of candles that were uh, supplied with oil, which represented the, the Holy Spirit's presence in that moment. And then the other table was a table of bread, reminding that God is the bread of life. And then the high priest would enter into the Holy of Holies and get to experience the full presence of God. And so really that's our invitation today. So Hebrews says, we don't need another sacrifice. Jesus is our high priest. You don't have to go through anybody else. We get to experience the full presence of God, but that the old way of doing things was a shadow. It's a pattern for how we get to encounter God today. So we've started with thanksgiving and praise. I think maybe for some of us, I want you to think about your posture today. We're gonna have a lot of time of worship and singing and music. And so maybe for some of us, we need to stand, maybe lift your hands and surrender. Maybe for some of you, you need to sit there for a moment. And just like the priest would see his own reflection, reflect on what areas in your life do you need to surrender? What areas do you need to be cleansed? Maybe invite the Holy Spirit in to your life. Rely on the bread of life. Maybe read some scripture. But our heart for this morning, more than anything else, that you would encounter the presence of the living God because a moment in his presence changes everything. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pray and I'm gonna invite the Holy Spirit here. It's this kind of weird thing we do because the Holy Spirit is here, but we're gonna ask him to fill this room. Bible says that God is enthroned on our praises. As we worship and praise, God begins to take his rightful seat on the throne of our hearts, the throne of this church, the throne over the entire world. And with so much craziness going on in the world right now, I think what we need more than anything else is the Holy Spirit to meet us here so we can sit in the presence of Jesus. Let's pray. Holy Spirit, we just come before you right now. And we know you're already here, but we're asking you to come anyway. Would you fill this place? Would you change lives? Would you reveal to us areas that we need to lay down? And God, would you just cleanse us of anything that's preventing us from connecting with you? Would you meet us here in this moment? We feel your presence. In your name I pray, amen. As you feel led, you can stand and worship. We have communion tables. Feel free to take communion. We even have journals there if you want to take a moment of reflection. But if you're comfortable standing in worship, I ask you to stand with us as we sing.
There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. No thing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence. I've tasted and seen the sweetest of loves. When my heart becomes free. Shame is undone. Your presence, Holy Spirit, I welcome. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory.
focus for this year is surrender. I'm really identifying those places in my life that I'm still struggling to let go of and fully give over to God. And I think we can tend to think of this word in a negative light, thinking of surrender or laying down of ourselves as a loss. But God doesn't call us to a place of surrender because He wants something from us. He calls us to a place of surrender because He wants something for us. And when I think about the posture and the times in my life when I find myself most surrendered, it's through worship. Because I love what worship does. When I come fully seeking God and approaching Him, it puts God in His rightful place and it puts me in my place. And I don't know about you, but sometimes I just simply need to get over myself. So often I'll approach God with my own agenda, my own plans, thinking that life on my terms is better. But when I seek Him this way and I put Him in His rightful place, my agenda absolves. And I let go of control because I can see that life His way is better. That life on His agenda is always better. And so when we recognize who God is and we can humble ourselves in who we are, then we're able to let go of our agenda. We're able to let go of control and we're able to just say, God, have your way. We want what you want. And the second thing that I love about what happens when we come fully surrendered to God is it satisfies our longing to be made right with Him. This week as I was praying about worship, the Lord brought to my mind the passage in Romans that talks about how all of creation groans in this longing to be made right with Him. See, we were made to worship. We have this longing to be made right with Him. And when we realize all of who He is, it covers all that we lack. And we see that everything that we're longing for is found in Him. I don't know about y'all, but when I get out of the rhythm of spending time with Jesus, sometimes I can find it hard to come back because when I'm not spending time with Jesus, when I'm not worshiping Him, I'm finding my satisfaction or attempting to find my satisfaction in other things. I'm worshiping other things because here's the thing, we all worship something. And if we're not giving it to Jesus, then something else is stealing our worship, whether it's our kids, or our spouse, or our work. And when we're not feeding the Spirit's voice in our life, the enemy's voice gets louder. And he's really good at creating this illusion that we are so far from God by making us feel guilty about where we lack. What I love about what worship does is it recenters our focus. And so when I find myself in this place, I love to find a worship song that is just simply all about who God is. Because when I'm focused on who God is, then it no matter, it doesn't matter any longer about where I lack. Because I see that all of who God is covers all of my shortcomings that everything that I'm longing for is found in Him and that life with Him is better. That when I come fully surrendered, that I'm becoming more like Him and that I'm being made right with Him. And so as we sing this next song, we're just gonna make this our heart's cry, to come to a place of surrender, to make space for God to move in our life, to lay those things down and just to recognize who He is and to cry out and say, God, life with you is better. Life on your terms is better. And we're just gonna seek after who God is and what he wants for us. Every 
about how worship is a weapon and man worship is such a huge part of my life not only music but worship music there's something happens within me when I begin to lift praises to God and if you know that to be true you know that worship is a weapon and I just wanted to go to this little story in Exodus I love it the people of God are being attacked by this enemy army and Moses tells Joshua, I want you to go and take some men. I want you to go down into the field and fight this enemy. And tomorrow, I'm going to stand up on this hill and I'm going to lift the staff of God in my hand and raise it towards heaven. And so the next day, that's exactly what Joshua does. He takes his sword. He takes his men down to the field to fight the enemy. Meanwhile, Moses takes Aaron and a guy named Hur they climb this mountain and Moses notices every time that he lifts his hands up to heaven the enemy retreats and the people of God begin to advance and every time he drops his hand the enemy begins to take back ground you know what I love about that story is it applies to my own life and worship there's only so much I can do in the physical there's only so much I can do in my ability, but there's two battles happening in this story. There's one that's happening in the field and the physical, and there's one that's happening in the spiritual, where Moses is, where he's lifting his hands. And that's where our, that's where our worship becomes a weapon. When we begin to raise our hands and worship God, we don't win it in the physical. We win it in the spiritual. When you begin to sing the song that's in your heart, you begin to fight those battles in your life. I don't know what you're facing this morning, but for those of you that need a win, those of you that need to take back what the enemy has stolen, yeah, those of you that need to raise your hands, I want to ask you right now, right where you are, lift your hands. Come on. Let's lift our hands to a holy God because when we do, it's a weapon. We go on the offense. We begin to take back the things that the enemy has stolen from us. I don't know what you're going through. You know, I can read the news and find something to worry about, something to be fearful of. You see, the enemy, I found out this about the enemy. He showed his cards. He doesn't care about my finances. He doesn't care about my relationship with my kids. What he wants is my worship. And he may attack those things in my life, but if I give him my worship, I give him the victory. So come on, Lord, right now, as we lift our hands, as we cry out to a holy God, what a time to be alive. This, these are times of worship, where worship becomes our weapon we cast aside the things in our life that do not matter those things we've put ahead of you we call on the name of God
that drove it back before. And though the night is long, I know your light will drive it back once more. Come on, church. Cause one to say this morning like I love being your worship pastor um, it is a it is an honor 
to lead you every week um, in worship. And, and I hope that you've seen, so this is uh, Matt Seegers and Bethany Spear. I hope you've seen some of their heart for what worship is and, and why we're passionate about what we do. Um, I was just thinking when Matt was talking, he had COVID, what, like a year, almost a year ago. And I remember his wife texted me um, about the experience there and, and she made it a priority to bring him uh, his guitar. And, and so when he's, when he's talking to you about worship being a weapon, it's not like this theory thing or, or this idea of maybe that's cool. Like it's, it's his life. It, it's, it's the way that he lives. Um, and same for Bethany. I mean, she is currently going through surrender daily. And God is, is working in her. So it's, it's not this thing that, oh, we, got, we have these topics. It, it's, it's our hearts. Um, and, and I just, uh, I know this is, is kind of crazy, but um, I just want to apologize as your worship pastor um, because uh, my heart is to teach people in worship. And I feel like that's what I'm called to do. And I'm not sure that I've done that the best uh, for you guys. So uh, I kind of want to just make a truce this morning or a covenant um, saying like from moving forward, we are, we're going to teach you how to, how to worship and, and what that practically looks like. But um, this morning, I also want to give you a challenge. Uh, if, you, if you think about the worship leader role, you don't really see it in the Bible. You know, it's not like, oh, David was this worship leader. You don't ever really see that phrase. But he led people to Jesus. He led people to worship. Um, and, and so I want, I want you to take that personally. And I'm going to declare you worship leaders this morning. Uh, you, you are called to lead people in worship. Um, you're called to bring people to Jesus. So I hope that, you know, I, th I think in, in coming in a Sunday morning, it can be a little weird. You know, if you haven't been in church for a little while, you come in and sing these songs and it feels a little bit like a concert and feels a little bit, you know, like there's these little elements of a service. Um, but the whole goal is to, to lead you to worship. And, and that's a challenge for you too, is to lead people around you to worship. Uh, and lead people around you to, to Jesus, ultimately. Um, and, and I kind of want to break down a little bit of like this, you know, the, the baffling of what worship is and singing and how that's all paired together. Um, I, I feel like, you know, if, if I just mentioned the concerts, if, you, if you've ever been to a concert, like you look around and there's, you know, there's all kinds of people. Like there's a guy, you know, in their 70s, there's people that, you know, that have tattoos, there's people that don't have tattoos, there's people that are white, that are black, that, um, you know, whatever from the spectrum. But somehow we unite around that music to come together and, and, and sing all together, right? That you guys have experienced that. Um, and, and so that is uh, in scripture, that is God's heart for us to literally come together and sing and unite as one. I mean, you look, you look at our world right now and it is crazy. Like there's, there's a lot of division, but the church, we are to stand united. And so that is a part of why we sing is to unite us. I think another thing um, that's so helpful is like, you guys ever like hear about, so I'll show my cards a little bit, uh, like a 90s song, like a pop song for me. Like when it comes on like the radio, like an oldie, I'm like, I know every word to this song. Like what in the world? How do I know every lyric? Um, so it, it's, it's crazy like how our mind works and how God crafted us. Um, but I feel like music, for some reason, we remember lyrics. We remember, you know, things about uh, whatever it is because of music. And so don't think that that is not intentional from God and intentional from what we do. Um, so I can read scripture all day long, but I may not remember it like I do a song, you know? And so these songs are for a Monday through Saturday. Like this is for you to go to, to go to war. This is for you to remember. This is a great way to remember who you are, uh, what God thinks of you and, and just the scriptures. I mean, there's so much good biblical truths in, uh, in scripture. And I think the last thing, um, and there's so many more, but these are just three that came to my mind. Um, last thing is it encourages us to press on. Um, you know, Paul's uh, letter to Timothy, he just says, press on, keep fighting. Um, and so I, I don't know, like, I, I don't know where you're at this morning, but I know for me, like I've, I've felt isolated recently. Um, and, and I've felt like I've been under attack um, and, and God has used some specific people uh, to come in and just speak life 
into me. One, um, crazy enough, we were getting yearly physicals and my doctor uh, came in. He's so amazing. He's just talking about, you know, all the things. I know he has a thousand, uh, you know, patients, but he came in and he knew, you know, hey, we dealt with this last time, blah, blah, look at me in the eye the, t- the whole time. And he said, hey, and how's your ministry? And I was like, wow. Um, and, and so we talked about that for a minute. And at the end, before he left, he, he kind of paused and he turned around and he said, hey, I take care of people's bodies and make sure that they're healthy, but you help take care of people's souls and don't take that lightly. Um, and, and so like, it, it really spurred me on. Um, and my wife and I were talking the other night just about this isolation and discouragement. Um, and she was like, babe, what, what can I do to, to help? You know, like, what can I do to help push you and press on in this season? And I just said, I just want to, I just need to be encouraged. That's, that's really what I need. I just need constant encouragement. I know you're gonna have to go above and beyond. Um, and she's so great. Yesterday, she was leaving to go shoot a wedding and, and she said it several times like, babe, you're hot. And I was like, I didn't even respond. And then she made sure to say it again. And I'm like, maybe I am hot, you know. Um, but she's, you know, she's, she's instilling these just things that she really believes about me. I think she does, man, that'd be, you know, hopefully she thinks I'm hot. Um, but I don't know if you need that this morning. Um, I know for my wife and I, when we sit down for date nights, I mean, this is a priority. We encourage each other. Um, so we just want to take a minute. John's going to turn up the music just a little bit, um, just to where you guys can encourage each other. So if your spouse is here or if you're, you know, your kids or whoever, um, Take a minute, man. Think, think of one or two things that are just encouraging to them and speak truth over them because it's so stinking powerful. Um, and and uh, we're gonna have Keith. Keith's gonna be up here. Julie's gonna be on this side. If you guys don't have anybody to encourage you or you just feel like, hey, I need, I need something different this morning, they are available. They're just gonna pray encouragement and truth of what God says this morning. So if we can stand together, um, we're just gonna take some time and just encourage each other. we just bring encouragement over our family right now. God, we thank you that there's there's a lens that you see us through, and that's Jesus. So we're so thankful that we don't have to live in this this lie that that maybe is just played out in our mind constantly, or that that we're leaning into. But the truth is that you see us through the most pure and holy one, and that you love us that same way. God, so I just, I break off the curse right now of discouragement. I break off the curse of, of, um, of just lies that we're believing, of, of convictions that, that just aren't supposed to be uh, lived out. God, I pray against the, uh, the lies of our past, the things that maybe we heard as a kid, or maybe that somebody just passing said and it's just stuck with us. I pray that that is broken off in the name of Jesus, that that is forgotten forever. It's washed white as snow right now in the name. God, I pray for, for new friendships to evolve. And I pray against isolation. God, and we just come back to that, that place
place of a firm foundation from you, God. That's where we worship out of this morning. We need you, Jesus. We love you. morning of worship. Hey, if you were blessed by all of these amazing worship leaders today, would you just let them know how much you appreciate them? I hope you were encouraged. I hope you were inspired today. But here's my challenge. Don't let it end right now. You know, we made our way into the presence of God and it's so easy now. You got to get to Mexican restaurant and back to real life. And we don't want to just rush out of his presence. The idea is that we can continue to live in in just a state of worship for the next uh, six days so we can come back and do this again next Sunday. So that's my challenge for you today. There's a couple next steps you may want to take this morning. The first may be uh, if you feel led to give, if Bridgepoint is your home church, you can do that on our website at bpc.life or on the Church Center app. 
um, or you can drop your offering in the two black baskets as you leave. If you have any prayer requests, we want to be praying for you. And so there's a connect card in the seat pocket right in front of you. You can fill that out and drop it in the black baskets as well. And then there's one other way. Maybe you've been checking Bridgepoint out for a few weeks or a few months and you're ready to take a next step. You're not sure what that looks like. We're doing something that we've never done before. On March 13th and March 20th, we're doing an event called Meet and Greet. And really what that is, it's just lunch with the staff and our families. And so there's no sales pitch there. It's just an opportunity to get to know us. We'd love to get to know you. We've got childcare and food all provided. The only thing we're gonna ask for you to do for us to help us prepare is you can scan that QR code and you can just register so we make sure we have enough babysitters and enough food to go around. So again, if you're newer to Bridgepoint, you're looking to take that next step, would love to meet you guys March 13th or 20th after the second service. Well, guys, again, thank you so much for worshiping with us. I hope you guys have a great week and we'll see you next Sunday.